Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd, a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. The polling is closer. Donation totals are closer. Size of the crowds are closer. Alice Ted Cruz comes to Lubbock for campaign help. And who needs more help these days than your child's teacher facing serious state budget cuts? Schools are making it work, but are they making the grade? From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters, this is Talking Points with Brian Mudd, brought to you by Capital Mortgage Services. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, collusion. Who ever thought I'd bring up that topic about the Board of Regents of Texas Tech University and members who might be in backroom political league with Texas A&M to influence tech policy and planning now, if all that sounds like pure tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, I kind of agree, but there are people behind the scenes saying it's true. And others saying the surprise retirement of Chancellor Robert Duncan had been building for a while over budget fights with Regents. It might be helpful if we heard from Regents directly about this. Regent John Steinmetz did talk a bit, denying but still bringing up a rumor that Duncan had misappropriated funds, which to the best of our knowledge, had only been mentioned in this EmpoweredTexans.com article that morning that Duncan's retirement announcement broke. No one seems to believe that article, by the way. Then there's the timing of Duncan's announcement right before a new legislative session when regents you'd think would want someone with Duncan's political chops to help with funding for projects like Tech Vet School. For its part, after this hit the proverbial fan, Texas Tech issued a press release saying that regents were absolutely continuing to work toward opening the vet school. The release, including quotes from President Skuvenik, saying we will continue to work closely with Health Sciences Center President Ted Mitchell and our board as we move forward with this important initiative. Mr. Duncan's been on vacation, the regents have gone stealth, but when we asked Lubbock State Senator Charles Perry about Mr. Duncan's departure, he had a lot to say. Uh, this is about a vet school, and it's about a chancellor at another university that has a long political career with a lot of political power, and ultimately you'll never be able to verify all of those uh, processes that went through to get till yesterday's decision, but that's the reality. But maybe we're just living in a conspiracy theory world here. A spokesperson for Texas A&M Chancellor John Sharp and Governor Greg Abbott denied any involvement with any move to push Duncan out the door. The governor will be in Lubbock Wednesday for a campaign fundraiser at Texas Tech with some of the regents. And a lot of people wondered why Mr. Duncan wasn't one of the official hosts, including other people on the host list. KMAX Tori Larned has more on that. 18 names on the host list, including three current Board of Regents members. George McMahon, another host of the event, yeah. says he donated to be a host because it would help build relationships. It's strictly a political fundraiser for the governor, and then the purpose is to uh, maintain good relations with between the governor and Texas Tech University so that he will be our ally in the legislature. But with relationships between Chancellor Duncan, the Board of Regents, and Governor Abbott up in the air, so too is the public support. Three weeks ago, he gave an interview on how much he loved Tech, how much he loved his job, and how much he was looking forward to getting the vet school done. Three weeks later, he resigns because he's 65. Uh, it's not right. The Board of Regents is filled with Texas Tech system alumni appointed by the governor. You make a large donation to the governor and in turn you are eligible for appointment to the Board of Regents. And they hold a lot of power. They oversee all the policy decisions of Texas Tech and they oversee the appointment of the chancellor and the president. While McMahon and many others want answers from the Board of Regents and the state, he says the host list may not be what it seems. I know that's a popular conspiracy theory, but I think the presumption would have been that he would have been there as one of the, not so much the host committee, but would have been there as a, as a host, not, not the paid host committee. Tori Larned, KMAC News. Tori, thank you. Our man Jay Leeson broke the story about Duncan's retirement. has been on this every day on the other side of Texas show on AM 580. Brothers, some sources think Aggie conspiracy still. Other ones think the board was just trying to push Duncan around rather than push him out. How are we cutting through this with the latest? Well, let's you you make up your mind. You know these hostilities. I've spoken with people that say this process and well sort. I mean, these are very good sources. Mm -hmm. Say these hostilities started. July 2017, when Duncan walked out of the session and Tech walked out of the session, 
with four million dollars for the vet school. That begins the marking of hostility. I know there are these budget fights, but it's nothing people, new. People tell me that it is Chairman Rick Francis putting his and John Steinmetz putting boots on Duncan's throat to say this is how bad things can be. That they have cut budgets and therefore they've had to not fill jobs and find money in other places. The budget talk is a sideshow because if anybody knows how to make a given budget work, it's Bob Duncan who knows everything about budgeting mm. at, at a Texas Tech or all the universities down in Austin. So, um, you know, a couple of things. What I've learned over the last 24 hours is that there was there were three executive sessions last Friday, okay? So August the, August the 10th, mm -hmm. three executive sessions. One was unrelated to the retirement, uh, the firing, whatever you want to call it. The second was Chairman Francis. Uh, it had to do with legislative appropriation requests, and they were to have those requests in on August the 3rd. Now, these appropriation requests were for items like the dental school and the vet school. But he had withheld signature. He had to sign off. They were ready to go, uh -huh. but he would not sign off on them. And the conversation, for some reason, became, should we not put either one of them in? And not Because in the beginning, I'm told he was saying, don't put either one in. Dental school or vet school. Yes. Yeah. We don't want to increase funding on that front. But then something, minds were changed, and it turned out that they did put in an LAR, a request for the vet school at 17 million, uh -huh. a little bit more for the dental school. That was a second executive meeting, and the, these are the details of went down, what went down with Bob Duncan. He went in, the regents went in to do a review, an annual review of Bob Duncan's contract. Last year they decided, year one of the contract, that they would make no changes. This year they decided that they did not want to renew the contract because the contract expires June 2019. Mm -hmm. Then there was a long discussion. Now I'm told that the discussion is the regents and then legal counsel. And legal counsel says, gentlemen, there will be no vote. You cannot vote by because everybody's asked talking about the vote. Right. Well, there wasn't a vote, but there was a vote because they went around the table one by one by one and gave a confidence or no confidence. And this went on for a while. And then they called Bob Duncan a storied political West Texas hero. They called Bob Duncan back into the room. It lasted five minutes, I'm told. And they told him, you will, you're forced to retire. You will retire. And you, rule one in business is you never fire someone unless you know who you're going to replace them with, especially not at that high a level. Do we, do they have a plan no, moving forward there is here? no plan. There's going to be an interim, but there's not a plan. And so it begs the question, if you're really out for Texas Tech, and you ask about Aggie collusion and how crazy, this is not sound crazy because they, these sources tell me the decision was made to force him to retire, retire so he wouldn't show back up down in Austin where he had an apartment leased for the next session to see Texas Tech's interests pass. Now that's why it happened when it happened. Now the other part of that is why not give him the, ex let him serve out until June 2019 mm -hmm. as you say. Mm -hmm. That's what we did with Kent Hance. Sure. Kent Hance stayed on board, but they aren't even going to give him that opportunity because they don't want to go into legislation. People who think that the vet school's in dire trouble, they are right to think that. I want to know who gave this misappropriation of funds comment to the Empowered Texans folks hours before any of this even came out. You're asking questions, and I've got some questions too, but mm -hmm. you know what they all stem from is the fact that we won't know the story because it went down in the executive session. Right. Why he was fired, what might have happened. And, and a green tweet from Representative Dustin Burroughs seem to give the appearance anyway there's there's a chance of a legislative ethics inquiry of some sort there are that could happen i can report on your program there are discussions there are discussions at this time so you think right. that could see the light of day uh i mean i i lobbied them pretty hard as soon as all this happened yeah, I'm and, and i'm sure burroughs has as well but here are other questions and these are not crazy questions what were the motives 
of the five, and especially the four, who voted against uh, Duncan in that confidence vote. And they were Long, Francis, Steinmetz, Hammonds, and Huckabee. Now, with those three of those, maybe four, you've got to ask, what are their energy holdings and what relation do they have with the Secretary of Energy, Rick Perry? Now this, whatever you might think, that needs to be looked at. What relationships, what contracts are in place? And with them as well, what contracts are in place with Texas A&M right now in parts of its system, components of its system? And those are things that people are looking at right now. And all this may sound nuts right now, but in the days to come, I think that we're going to see some smoke. In the days to come, folks, you've got to be listening to the other side of Texas on AM 580 and the podcast of the same name, Jay Leeson. Keep doing good work, my man. Hey, it's, a, it's a disaster every week. I know, right? My goodness. Well, let's do this week's poll question. Do you believe the Texas Tech Board of Regents is acting in the best interest of the university? Talk to us on our KMAC News Facebook page and on everythinglubbock.com. Click on Talking Points. Give us your opinion. Coming up, seven candidates have one chance to make their case to be on the November ballot. And the kids are back in school, but will it be the educational experience you expect? The Austin issue is making teaching tough next on Talking Points.